The Tragedy of Hamlet, Prince of Denmark. By William Shakespeare. Chapter 1 Dramatis Personae Claudius, King of Denmark. Marcellus, Officer. Hamlet, son to the former, and nephew to the present king. Polonius, Lord Chamberlain. Horatio, friend to Hamlet. Laertes, son to Polonius. Voltmund, courtier. Cornelius, courtier. Rosencrantz, courtier. Guildenstern, courtier. Osric, courtier. A gentleman, courtier. A priest. Marcellus, officer. Bernardo, officer. Francisco, a soldier Einaldo, servant to Polonius. Players. Two clowns, gravediggers. Fortinbras, prince of Norway. A Norwegian captain. English ambassadors. Gertrude, Queen of Denmark, mother to Hamlet. Aphelia, daughter to Polonius. Ghost of Hamlet's father. Lords, ladies, officers, soldiers, sailors, messengers, attendants. Scene. Elsinore. Act 1. Scene I. Elsinore. A platform before the castle. Enter two sentinels first. Francisco, who paces up and down at his post then, Bernardo, who approaches him. But. Who's there? Fran. Nay, answer me. Stand and unfold yourself. But. Long live the king. Fran. Bernardo? But. He. Fran. You come most carefully upon your hour. But. Tis now struck twelve. Get thee to bed, Francisco. Fran. For this relief much thanks. Tis bitter cold, and I am sick at heart. But. Have you had quiet guard? Fran. Not a mouse stirring. But. Well, good night. If you do meet Horatio and Marcellus, the rivals of my watch, bid them make haste. Enter Horatio and Marcellus. Fran. I think I hear them. Stand. Ho. Oh. Who is there? Haw. Friends to this ground. March. And liegement to the Dane. Fran. Give you good night. March. Oh, farewell, honest soldier. Who hath relived you? Fran. Bernardo hath my place. Give you good night. Exit. March. Hola, Bernardo. But. Say what, is Horatio the? Poor. A piece of him. But. 
Welcome, Horatio. Welcome, Good Marsless. March. What, has this thing appeared again tonight? B. I have seen nothing. March. Horatio says tis but our fantasy, and will not let belief take hold of him touching this dreaded sight, twice seen of us. Therefore I have entreated him along, with us to watch the minutes of this night, that, if again this apparition come, he may approve our eyes and speak to it. Haw. Tush, tush, twill not appear. B. Sit down a while, and let us once again assail your ears, that are so fortified against our story, what we two knights have seen. Haw. Well, sit we down, and let us hear Bernardo speak of this. B. Last night of all, when yon same star that's westward from the pole had made his course to illumine that part of heaven where now it burns, Marsless and myself, the bell then beating one. Enter Ghost. March. Peace. Break thee off. Look where it comes again. B. In the same figure. Like the king that's dead. March. Thou art a scholar, speak to it, Horatio. B. Looks it not like the king? Mark it, Horatio. Haw. Most like. It harrows me with fear and wonder. It would be spoke to. March. Question it, Horatio. Haw. What art thou that usurps this time of night together with that fair and warlike form in which the majesty of buried Denmark did sometimes march? By heaven I charge thee speak. March. It is offended. B. See, it stalks away. Haw. Stay. Speak, speak. I charge thee speak. Exit ghost. March. Tis gone and will not answer. How now, Horatio? You tremble and look pale. Is not this something more than fantasy? What think you own't? Haw. Before my God, I might not this believe without the sensible and true avouch of mine own eyes. March. Is it not like the king? Haw. As thou art to thyself. Such was the very armor he had on when he th ambitious Norway combated. So frowned he once when, in an angry pal, he smote the sledded Pollux on the ice. Tis strange. March. Thus twice before, and jump at this dead hour, with martial stalk hath he gone by our watch. Haw. In what particular thought to work I know not but, in the gross and scope of my opinion, this bodes some strange eruption to our state. March. Good now, sit down, and tell me he that knows. Why this same strict and most observant watch so nightly toils the subject of the land, 
and why such daily cast of brazen cannon and foreign mart for implements of war why such impressive shipwrights, whose sore task does not divide the Sunday from the week. What might be toward, that this sweaty haste doth make the night joint labourer with the day? Who is it that can inform me? Haw. That can I. At least, the whisper goes so. Our last king, whose image even but now appeared to us, was, as you know, by Fortinbras of Norway, there too pricked on by a most emulate pride, dared to the combat in which our valiant Hamlet, for so this side of unknown world esteemed him, did slay this Fortinbras who, by a sealed compact, well ratified by law and heraldry, did forfeit, with his life, all those his lands which he stood seized of, to the conqueror against the which a moiety competent was gauged by our king which had returned to the inheritance of Fortinbras, had he been vanquisher, as, by the same comart and carriage of the article designed, his fell to Hamlet. Now, sir, young Fortinbras, of unimproved metal hot and full, hath in the skirts of Norway, here and there, sharked up a list of lawless resolutes, for food and diet, to some enterprise that hath a stomach kind which is no other, as it doth well appear unto our state, but to recover of us, by strong hand and terms compulsatory, those for said lands so by his father lost and this, I take it, is the main motive of our preparations, the source of this our watch, and the chief head of this post haste and rummage in the land. But I think it be no other but e'en so. Well may it sort that this portentous figure comes armed through our watch, so like the king that was and is the question of these wars. Haw. A moat it is to trouble the mind's eye. In the most high and palmy state of Rome, a little ere the mightiest Julius fell, the graves stood tenantless and the sheeted dead did squeak and gibber in the Roman streets as stars with trains of fire, and dews of blood, disasters in the sun and the moist star upon whose influence Neptune's empire stands was sick almost to doomsday with eclipse. And even the like precursor fierce events, as harbingers preceding still the fates and prologue to the omen coming on, have heaven and earth together demonstrated unto our climateur and countrymen. Enter ghost again. But soft. Behold. Lo, where it comes again. I'll cross it, though it blast me. Stay illusion. Spreads his arms. If thou hast any sound, or use of voice, speak to me. If there be any good thing to be done that may to thee do ease, and, race to me, speak to me. If thou art privy to thy country's fate, which happily for knowing may avoid, oh, speak. Or if thou hast uphoarded in thy life extorted treasure in the womb of earth, for which, they say, you spirits oft walk in death, the cock crows. Speak of it. Stay, and speak exclamation mark stop it, marsless. March. Shall I strike at it with my partisan? Haw. Do, if it will not stand. But. Tis here. Haw. Tis here. March. Tis gone. Exit ghost. We do it wrong, being so majestical, to offer it a show of violence for it is as the air, invulnerable, and our vein blows malicious mockery. But. It was about to speak, when the cock crew. Haw. And then it started, like a guilty thing upon a fearful summons. I have heard the cock, 
that is the trumpet to the morn, doth with his lofty and shrill sounding throat awake the god of day and at his warning, whether in sea or fire, in earth or air, th extravagant and erring spirit hies to his confine and of the truth here in this present object made probation. March It faded on the crowing of the cock. Some say that ever, gainst that season comes wherein our Saviour's birth is celebrated, the bird of dawning singeth all night long and then, they say, no spirit dare stir abroad, the nights are wholesome, then no planets strike, no fairy takes, nor which hath power to charm, so hallowed and so gracious is the time. Whore. So have I heard and do in part believe it. But look, the morn, in russet mantle clad, walks o'er the dew of yon high eastward hill. Break we our watch up and by my advice let us impart what we have seen tonight unto young Hamlet for, upon my life, this spirit, dumb to us, will speak to him. Do you consent we shall acquaint him with it, as needful in our loves, fitting our duty? Let's dot. I pray and I this morning know where we shall find him most conveniently. Exeunt.